Hey guys, MattBrick16 here, and today I have the new Diagon Alley set. And this set has 5,544 pieces. The set number is 75978, and it's recommended for ages 16 plus. And this is a really cool set, so let's get into it. So here is the set, and if you want to open it, you just go to the side, and you cut the three tape seals. And inside, there's a box inside. Let me just get that out of here. A box, and then it looks like there are some bags inside. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah. There's some bags, and then, yeah. These look like some under bags, and then, so yeah, that's the unboxing experience. So here is the mini box. I'm just going to open the mini box now. And there is, looks like a mystery box. And then there is the... I think these are the first eight bags, the base plates, and the instructions. So first up, I have Harry Potter, The Boy Who Lived. So, so I'm just going to say this right now. Sadly, n none of the figures besides Hermione come with wands in this set. And I find that a bit sad. But this is definitely one of my favorite variants of Harry Potter because he has the robes, yet he's wearing casual clothes under it, which I like really nice. It's his back bench. And then he has a really nice exclusive face print to this set with the cracked glasses and the dust for when he goes through the flu network to Borgen and Burks instead of Diagon Alley. And his other face is just a normal smiley Harry Potter face. And I find this a really nice version of Harry. Second figure is Ron Weasley. And he has blue legs, the same torso print as Harry because they're both in Gryffindor. And he has a, the same face print as the first wave of Harry Potter sets. And this is a nice Ron variant to get here. Like I said, I really like the outfits they wore in the beginning of Chamber of Secrets. And it's nice to get these outfits in Lego. Next is Hermione Granger. She has the same torso print as Harry and Ron because they're all in Gryffindor House. She has some nice brown legs. Comes with a wand. Like I said, she's the only character with a wand in this set. And she has the same Hermione face as the other ones in the first wave. And this is the backside. And then the the original Hermione hairpiece used in the reboot of the Harry Potter line. And this is a really nice figure to get in the set as well as the other ones. Fourth is Draco Malfoy. He has some black legs and then the Slytherin robes print, which is a really nice for him. And then he has the same face as the Great Hall, I think. And then his other side, he's smiling. But I like this side more because he's angry on this side. And this is another really nice figure to get in this set. Diagon Alley is just really amazing with the figures. This is Lucius Malfoy. He comes with a cane as his accessory, which you could argue is his wand. But it's really just a stick piece there. And he has the normal robe print there for the legs. And then a really nice exclusive print for his torso. And then his face doesn't really work, I don't think. The face they gave him. I don't think this looks like Lucius at all. They should have made a custom face, but they just reused this old one. My only complaint about this otherwise amazing figure. No other side for his head. But this is a... The first time we got Lucius in the new Harry Potter line. And I'm glad we got him. It's just a bit weird to see this face with him. This is Ginny Weasley. She comes with the book Magical Me. Sadly, it is a sticker. But there's also no inside. But it's still a really nice book to get. And then she has a nice torso print as well as black legs. And then she has a happy face and then a sad face. And it does work for Ginny. This is a really nice figure. We don't get many Ginnies, and we haven't gotten one from 
the Chamber of Secrets in the new line. And it's a nice figure to get in this set. So here is Mrs. Weasley. She comes with a nice dress piece and a nice torso piece for the print. And then she has a very accurate face print with a smile and then an even bigger smile. However, I do not think the hair piece works. I think it's too short. I think the old hair piece they used worked a lot better for Mrs. Weasley. But this is a nice exclusive variant of her for this set. Gilderoy Lockhart. He has the exact same book, Magical Me, as Ginny. And then, let me just fix him. He has some legs, purple legs, which is nice, a nice torso print. And he actually has a harder style of capes, and that's kind of different from the new feltier style they've been using, and it's purple and gold. And he has a really nice face print with um, really accurate hair. And then something I find funny is his other face, where he's like trying hard to s smile and he's sweating really hard, which is for when he's faking something. And this is just a really nice figure. And yeah, it's the first time we've gotten him in LEGO since 2002 with the old Harry Potter line. So this is just a really nice figure. So here is Mr. Ollivander. He comes with a box that has a wand in it. And then he has a really nice torso print with the red vest. And then he also has a really nice face print. And then his hair piece does really work for him. And this is another really nice figure to get in this set. Second to last figure is the Daily Prophet Photographer. He comes with a camera here, and it's a really nice old style camera. It looks really accurate to the films. And then this wizard is really accurate to the films, where he was just a minor character. It's really nice to get minor characters like these in LEGO. He has a nice back print there, and then he actually uses the Scarecrow hairpiece. And then his other face is not so happy, like when he gets a bad picture. And this is another great figure to get in the Diagon Alley set. So our last figure is Florian Fortescue. He wasn't in the movies. He, if he was, he was just in the background. You don't really get to talk to him in the movies. And in the books, he was a very minor character as well. The one example of what I remember him doing is he gave Harry free ice cream in Prisoner of Azkaban when Harry was in Diagon Alley. So that's uh, really nice to get this figure in Lego. He comes with ice cream and a spoon, and he has a really nice smiling face print. And then on uh, his other face print, he's not so happy. And the torso print is really nice, and this is just a really nice figure. I like it when Lego gives us minor characters because then you can just use them in the background, and yeah, it's just nice to have minor characters in Lego form. So here is the Ollivander's building. I'm going to go from top to bottom. So for starters, there's a really nice twisted chimney there. I think that's a really nice detail. And then there's some stairs that go down to the Scribulus rooftop, where Hedwig's flying away with the Daily Prophet. And there's two owls on the Ollivanders. One of them's half asleep, which I find really funny, and the other one's wide awake. And then there's the Ollivander sign, and then that right there is a nice sticker that says Makers of Fine Wands since 382 BC, which is really accurate. And then and there's the door. I have it slightly open. And then there's the Scribulus store. These stores are really nice on the exterior. And then I just want to show something quickly. Um, there's a pin here. It doesn't connect to anything in the set because this is an end building. So I think it's a possibility that Gringotts could connect here and instead of having it go this way for the plate, it could instead go this way and maybe have a building that like kind of ropes off there, a curved building. And then here is the interiors. For starters, in Scribulus, there's a nice upstairs room with a couch, a blue carpet, empty fireplace, a potion, and a skeleton head of some kind. And then down in here, in the bottom of Scribulus, there's some nice quills, and then a lamp with a quill for writing the thing. And then there's a nice scroll in the window. You can see the writing from the window. And then 
And there's a wand shelf in the bottom of Ollivander's, as well as a wand on display in the window. You can see the back of it. And then Mr. Ollivander's desk. And then the staircase here has some wands in it. And the staircase can actually fold in for some nice, easy storage. Up here, there's a nice green chair for Mr. Ollivander to sit in. Some more wands, a ladder to reach the higher end of the wand shelf there. Which, it's really nice that they include all these wand boxes. Oh, there's a lot of them scattered throughout the set. Not all the wand boxes are actual wand boxes. Like, as you can see, this is the only one that can come out on this shelf. But the other ones, like, there's a really nice design. And then, overall, Ollivander's is my third favorite building. Not to say that it's bad or anything. It's a great building. I just think there are definitely other buildings that have a better design. This is my least favorite building, not that it's bad or anything, it just like other buildings better. So anyway, I'm going to start from top to bottom. There's some newspapers up there, and then a nice chimney, and then a little crawl area, which I'll show you the interior after. Some nice windows and quality quidditch supplies, and then this one is near the edge, and there's a Ravenclaw robe in there. I'll take a further look after. Some Hufflepuff Quidditch robes in the window there, as well as a Firebolt in the window, which is really nice. There's a Bludgers and Snitch, I think, in the in the sign there. And then there's a nice Daily Prophet door. I like how not all the doors have windows, which is, I think that's nice. I don't exactly love the gap there, but it's still awesome, the building techniques they use to get that. And then there's a sign in there that says Daily Prophet, and then a banner that says Quidditch. And then, yeah, that's it, about it for the exterior. And then on the interior, I'm just going to say, for starters, there's a nice exterior door there that can open up, as well as a sticker so that, before we get to the interior. But here's the interior. Up in the crawl space, you have scabbers going for a piece of cheese, and some boxes, and some newspapers. Then in the Daily Prophet, there's a spider web up there with a spider, and then, and then just a box with newspapers. Not really much for the interior of this door, but it's good still. And then here are the Nimbus 2000 and Nimbus 2001s in quality quidditch supplies. A sticker that says, feel free to test fly any of our brooms, which I like. Some quidditch robes on the shelf, and then there's a bat and a quaffle in there and then there's some Ravenclaw quidditch robes some more bats there um a mat that says QQS quality quidditch supplies the firebolt from the inside and the different robes and yeah the, these shops are pretty good the, it's just not my favorite shops I prefer the other ones which you'll see my next two favorites coming up so yeah, these two shops are really nice. It's definitely my favorite building, which is the ice cream parlor in Flourish and Blots. So I'm gonna start with the desk that comes with Flourish and Blots. There's a nice quill there and some black books stacked up. And it's a really nice small desk. But anyway, I'm going to start with the exterior floor and floor skews. There's some nice roofing, a lantern, and I really like how they have the tables up there. And then there's a nice little awning with another table and chairs. I accidentally knocked one of these chairs over. They are loose, so they will fall out. And then Flourish and Blots. I just really like how it's coming out, and it's like a balcony, yet not a balcony. I just really like that. And then there are some books there in the front. And then in the interior in here... So for starters, Florian Fortescues has a nice little upstairs room for just entertainment. A nice little lamp, a chair, and some tea. I'm just going to push that down. And then here there is a menu there, which it has Fortescues ice cream, two days su suggestions, and then it says chocolate with peanut butter, black beer, and raisin, beet bat juice and earwig and then there is some ice cream goblets there and an ice cream ready to go and i like the design and then my favorite building is flourish and blots 
there's a book there open and then some more books stacked. I like how they have different colored books. And then down there they have a sticker that says Dragons and Alchemy. And then what I love is this stack, how one of the books is mid falling off. And yeah, I just really like all the books in here. And then here is the staircase and it can actually lift up like that for easy storage. So like I said, this is by far my favorite building. And yeah, I just really love the design of this building in particular. And yeah. Here is Weasley's Wizard Wheezies, but before I show you that, I'm going to show you the Love Potion Fountain. And this is really nice with the heart pieces there. And I just really like the design of it and how some of the platforms are higher than the others. And yeah, this is really a really nice fountain. And then for Nocturne Alley in here, there's a nice window that's kind of tilted. And then a sign that says Nocturne Alley. And then some nice black and gray bricks. I really like that design. And then for Weasley's Wizard Weasies, there's a nice roof. And then there's the man hanging out of there. There's some nice orange windows and purple walls. And the guy's hat can actually move if he, by doing this. There's a switch up here. And then there's a nice little thing right here that can turn. However, it's very fragile, so you want to hold it from where I am holding it while you turn it. A nice lantern there. And then the windows say different things. So up here it says, Disastrous Delights, Masterpieces of Modern Magic, Petrifying Products, Always Wheeze Guaranteed, and then Weasley's Wizard Wheezies, Shenanigans for All, Weasley's Wizard Wheezies, and the best in jest. So I do really like this exterior. It's really nice. And then here it has a Jinx Off poster of Weasley's Globe and then a Dark Mark. And I really like those graffitis. And then here's a balloon set. It can come off. It's supposed to tilt like this, but it always comes off. I had it in the in the easy like display mode where you are, don't have the interior and have it against the wall. It is hard to get on with one hand. And then I really like what they have going on with the railings. They have a nice rock there, glittery rock. And then some boxes throughout the attic area, I think it is. And then there's a Technic for the man. And then there's like a magic kit, some more stuff. And then Fred Weasley's basic blaze box, some lollipops, a counter, some more things. Throughout it, there's actually a crystal ball down there, and then a dancing doxy. So I do really like all the stuff they have in the interior. It's a bit crowded, but it's all still awesome. And this is my second favorite building. Not that any of them are bad. I know I've said this a million times, but yeah. The, I just like Flourish and lots more, but this is definitely an amazing building to have in this set. Lego did a really amazing job with it. So here is the mystery box, and it says Silencio, keep it between us. Silencio, I think, is a spell in the Harry Potter universe. And then in the back here, there's a thumb tab. And then if you open that up, one sec. Thumb tab boxes are always super hard to open for some reason. And it uh, looks like a stand with a special Harry Potter minifigure. Wow, that's really cool, actually. So here is the stand you get in the mystery box. And there's a nice printed piece there that says, Welcome, Harry, to Diagon Alley. That was my Hagrid impression, because Hagrid says that in the movie. And anyway, so there's a nice exclusive version of Harry from when he first goes in Diagon Alley. He has the exact same face print as the other Harry, so I'm not going to get into that. And then here is Hagrid, who is really nice. It's the same Hagrid as in the Great Hall. And this is a really nice figure. And then under the beard, he has just a half-smile face. And... These are two more really nice figures with a really nice stand build. It's nice to see a, a printed piece. And yeah, this is just a really nice stand. So with all the buildings, you're going to need a way to display Diagon Alley. And here is the main way. 
all the four buildings connecting. But for people who have limited storage options like me, it doesn't fit on the table. So where are you supposed to put it? Well, I'm going to show you two other ways. One of them is in the instruction manual and explains the clips on the back. So let's show you those. So one way to display it is in alley format. I put the shops how I think Diagon Alley actually goes with quality quidditch supplies next to Flourish and Blots with Ollivanders next to Weasley's Wizard Wheezies, even though quality quidditch supplies would normally be touching Ollivanders. I just think it looks better this way. And this is definitely a good way to display it. But there's another way included in the back of the Lego instruction manuals. The way to display it is like this, where you put the buildings back to back. And something actually quite funny is if you take this and then you move this, you actually get a Nocturne Alley that leads into, into the Daily Prophet, which is quite funny, I think. And so I kind of like how the buildings can go back to back. And yeah, that's a really nice way to display it. So here is the set overall. And I think this is the best Lego Harry Potter set ever released. It's the biggest Harry Potter set ever released, and I think it's the best. It has a nice mystery thing, which I hope Lego keeps on doing because it adds an element of surprise to when you're building the set to do it. As you can see, I put the mystery box on top of the Diagon Alley box. And yeah, this is the best Lego Harry Potter set ever, I think. Unless they make an expansion of this, then I'll probably show Diagon Alley all together if they make a Gringotts expansion. But yeah, this is the best Lego Harry Potter set, in my opinion. So, anyway guys, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.